imagine that you're floating down a river. The stream is calm and serene and the river is flowing without any obstruction. The way water moves in a river is very similar to how electricity moves in wires. And when we say that electricity is flowing, what we are actually talking about is the flow of electrons. Electric current is the total amount of charge passing through a wire over a period of time. But how does current actually form? What can it pass through and what determines how strong is it going to be? To know the answers to all these questions, just sit back, relax and go with the flow. It all began over 2600 years ago. An ancient Greek called Thales of Miletus is thought to be the person to observe what we now call as electric phenomena. He discovered that when pieces of amber are rubbed with fur, they would attract small straws. It is the same phenomena that gives us the zap on touching a doorknob or the one that causes lightning. In Thales's language, amber was called electron. For the rest of the time, that was all anybody knew about electricity. We had to wait for another 2200 years before new investigation could be made into Amber's properties. William Gilbert, another 17th century scientist from England, discovered that with careful experimentation, a number of other materials could also display the attractive properties of Amber. He found that they can attract other objects besides straw. Gilbert named these Amber-like properties after the same name. He called them electric. About 40 years later, Sir Thomas Brown carried out some experiments. They were not different from Gilbert's experiments. Yet, the way he described these experiments, he coined the term which we all use all the time. The way he saw it is when you rub a crystal with a cloth, it becomes an electric object. And just as we say that elastic objects have elasticity in them, electric objects possess the property of electricity. But till now, nothing really explains the flow of electricity. For understanding that, we need to take a closer look. Much more closer look. We must have heard that all matter around us is made up of atoms. Atoms consists of protons, neutrons, which form the nucleus of the atom. Orbiting around the nucleus are the electrons. Electrons, which are much smaller and lighter than the protons, can relatively move easily. And this movement of electrons is what causes electric current. The atom's protons account for the positive charge and the electrons for the negative charge. In a stable condition, these charges balance each other out. Within the atom, the net electric charge is zero. For each positive proton, there will be one negative electron. However, we can change this state by causing the atom to lose or gain electrons. When the atom has fewer electrons than protons, it becomes positively charged. But when an atom has more electrons than protons, the net charge swings the other way and the atom becomes negatively charged. In other words, losing or gaining electrons changes the atom's electric charge. How easily an atom gives up or gains electrons is called its conductivity. Good conductors have loosely bound electrons which are easily transferred or lost. Insulators or poor conductors lack in these loosely bound electrons. A simple example where you can see a conductor and an insulator working together is an electrical wire. The electrical wire has a copper core and a rubber shell. The millions of atoms in this wire can easily exchange electrons, allowing us to make an electrical circuit. These are just tiny marbles in a tube, moving from a high place full of marbles to a low place lacking in marbles. Imagine these marbles all along the circuit, each depicting an electron. These marbles originate from a power source such as a battery. A battery pushes out electrons from one end and attracts them from the other end. For the flow of electrons, we must provide them with a path, such as a copper conductor in a wire. If this path is blocked, maybe because the wire is cut, the electrons cannot flow, stopping the electrical circuit. The key to the flow of electricity is making a continuous electrical circuit by connecting a wire between the source and an attractor of electrons. All electrical devices are powered this way and this is why your battery has two poles known as terminals. This is also why the plug has at least two tongs which go inside the socket. None of the electrons are spent or destroyed in this process. 
they are only useful when they reach the destination, which is from the negative terminal towards the positive terminal. But wait, if that is true, why do we always show electric current as passing from the positive terminal towards the negative terminal? We'll save that story for the class. See you there!